What's up everyone? Welcome back to Go-Kart Build video number 6. And uh, in the previous video, I finished welding the main section of the go-kart frame together. And in this video, I have a lot of exciting stuff to tell you guys and a lot of a lot of exciting stuff to cover. So, I did a lot of work off cam off camera yesterday just because um, it was a lot of the same stuff that I did in video number four and video number five. So I didn't want to bore you guys to death with, you know, welding and welding and more welding. So I kind of just skipped ahead, did some work, and then um, I finished yesterday. So I want to show you guys what I finished before I go on to the main content of this video. Now what I'm about to show you guys is pretty freaking awesome. And I'm super stoked to see this because the go-kart is finally coming together. So I'm gonna go grab it and then I'll show you guys. So what I have here is the entire frame, or at least the you know main components of the frame for the go-kart. And it's all welded together, just tack welded of course. And I finished this last night and I'm really excited that I finished this because I'm making a lot of progress in these videos. Oh, you can't see me. Oh, that's not good either. So I'm really excited that I got that done because now I'm just going to move moving on to more parts. And uh, after I finish these other parts today, I'm going to do even some more welding. Um, but I am going to add on a few more pieces to this frame just because from a structural standpoint, I think some pieces need to be reinforced and I'll go over that in the later parts of this video. But I really wanted to show you guys this to kick off this video because I was stup super stoked to get this done last night. And um, yeah, so that's it for that and we're gonna go ahead and get on to the new content today. Now the first thing I wanted to show you guys in this video is um, what I've been doing, or what I was doing last night before I finished up. And I was going to finish it all, but I figured I'd show you guys uh, the, the uh, fabrication of the last one. But basically what I was doing was manufacturing the shock tab mounts. And um, like I said in video number three, I think it was, um, these are the shock tab mounts uh, that I got the idea from T-Man's Go-Karts YouTube channel. Um, so these are coming along well. I finally got a drill press vise. So in the video that I mentioned before when Will was here, I told you guys that we weren't having success with our drill press. And that was because we were trying to hold it in with like clamps and C-clamps. And luckily I was able to pick this vise up from Harbor Freight for like 13 bucks. And so now it just streamlines things so much better. You know, it things that, you know, when the drill press goes down into the, um, the piece it doesn't grab it and then start spinning it around with it you know it's clamped down securely and it makes things so much easier so um, I finished 11 of them there's 12 two for each um, shock and there's six shocks um, so what I was what I do is I measure out on here I have special measurements that I came up with so um, so if you lay it out like this, it's 6 eighths of an inch down and 4 eighths of an inch across. So I just go ahead and mark those up with a Sharpie and that I get kind of like a crosshair design and then I put it on here, line it up and then drill right through. So we're going to go ahead and do that for this last one just so I can kind of show you guys the uh, fabrication of these. And then once we finish drilling through all of them, I'm going to go ahead and a lot of them still have the a lot of like edge metal, like they're not very clean. So I'm going to go ahead and clean those up with the angle grinder and then um, we're going to go from there. All right, so we got our piece set up here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, tape measure. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure, I'm trying to figure out how to do this without being in the way. So I'm going to measure 6 eighths of an inch from the top. Try and get that straight. This part is always hard because the edges of these pipe are campered a little bit. So it's hard to figure out exactly what the edge is to go from. So I'm going to measure 6 eighths. Make a little mark, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure over um, a half inch from the edge, from the left edge. And that's just about there. Oops. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my, uh, my square, and I'm gonna go ahead and mark the lines to get kind of that cross crosshair <clears throat> design so it's easy to uh, set up in the drill press.
All right, so there we go. Oops, there we go. So, as you can see, nice and easy to read. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the drill press and get it all um, set up in the vise. All right, so we got our vise here. Um, and what I had to do was, so the drill press has this plate on it. And this plate has two um, spaces that go, that run this way along the plate. And basically that allows you to clamp down, you know, some sort of vise. And in this case, this is a special vise for a drill press. And I went ahead and bought some half inch bolts from Home Depot because it didn't come with any. And then I just secured it down. And then I had to use a piece of, um, this is actually a piece of the suspension arm tubing. I just had to use that to kind of space this over. So what I do is I get this set up in here like that. And then I'm gonna use a, a washer um, just to kind of space it even better because when I tighten it down, I want it to get as close as I can to being right under the drill press. And so then I kind of test it and that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to secure it down a little more. Okay. And normally I drill pilot holes for stuff like this, but since it's in the drill press um, vise, I'm not really worried about that because the main reason why you want to drill pilot holes is because you, well for accuracy one, and then also so it doesn't rip the piece up when you um, when you begin uh, punching through the other side, so underneath here, not just the top. Um, but I think I'll be okay. I mean, I was okay for the other 11 pieces. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the drill press plugged in and then we'll drill it up. good all right so now I got the first shock tab mount mounted up in the vise and I'm going to be using the angle grinder to um, to kind of grind off the edges and prepare everything um, to cut the tops off um, I'm gonna cut the tops off so when I mean cut the tops off you cut this part off so that way you have a completely open top for the shock to mount through but I need to get a uh, thinner um, blade for the uh, angle grinder so I'm gonna go ahead and do that but first I'm gonna get these all cleaned up and ready to go so here we go So this side's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around and then we'll do the other side. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean up these edges and then this piece will be good.
All right, so I just finished up this uh, first shock tab mount and uh, kind of cleaning it off and um, getting rid of that, you know, the little excess pieces of metal when we cut it. And um, I have to do 11 more, so I don't want to bore you guys to get to death. So I'm going to go ahead and do them all, and then I'll, you know, catch up with you guys when I finish because it's essentially the same process, just repeated 12 times. So I will see you guys when I'm done. All right, so I just finished up the 12 shock tab mounts and um, I finished cleaning all the surfaces off and the only thing I have left to do with these is cut the little tops off and then round the edges on the top. And then that'll be it for the shock tab mounts. Um, and I'm gonna do the uh, tops a little bit later just because I need to get a smaller width cutting wheel for the angle grinder, so I gotta make a trip to Home Depot. Um, but for now, what I wanna show you guys is what I'm gonna do to the frame. I'm gonna add a few pieces of the frame uh, for some extra support and um, so I'm going to take you guys over and show you the frame now and what areas I want to um, add on to. Alright so here we got the full frame welded um, laying on the ground and what I wanted to show you guys was some of the areas that I'm going to add on to and the biggest area that I'm going to add on to is um, right here and here. I'm going to add another um, 45 degree cut piece because if you think about it you know, I'm going to be sitting right here, approximately, and that's where a lot of weight is weight is going to be pushing down on the frame. So I want to make sure that the this section of the frame is uh, definitely strong enough to hold up to that weight, and all the the loading force is going to be applied to this area. And I just felt that this connection point, even though these are you know there's three connection points here, connecting this midsection to the main section, I felt that adding that um, extra these two extra pieces will really increase the structural rigidity of the frame. And then as also, also I'm gonna be adding probably uh, a piece here and a piece here. And then also um, in the back here, I have to cut some more pieces, but I'm kind of waiting on um, the sprocket and all the axle stuff to come in uh, before I cut those. But I'm definitely gonna do these right now. And then also the ones in the front probably. So I'm gonna take you guys over to my computer and I'm gonna show you um, the AutoCAD design as I add on the new pieces. Alright guys, so here we are over on the computer and I have the AutoCAD drawing of the go-kart pulled up and um, so as you can see here, here's the frame and everything and minus the suspension arms on the sides, pretty much everything is welded together. Uh, actually everything is welded together. Um, but as I mentioned just previously, I want to add some new sections to the frame uh, just to add a little bit more structural support and I've already added in one of them right here So as you can see um, it's just another 45 degree cut um, Going from this midsection to the front, you know bar of the uh, Of the main section and I'm going to go ahead and add another one on the other side So what I did was, was I measured um, like halfway from here to this, uh, the bottom of this piece up here. And so this piece is going to be approximately halfway between this piece and this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and use the line command. And this, for, some, for those that don't know AutoCAD, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. But basically go up, and I'm going to go up 4.04 uh, .04 inches, and then make sure it's 90 degrees. Okay, so now we have that, and so now we're going to just basically go down, uh, this is going to be the one side of our uh, tube, and we're going to go down at a 45 degree angle, so we don't really care about the length right now, we just want to make sure it's, oh, you know what, it's not going to be 45, it's going to be 135, I think. Yeah, so it's 135 because it, it's based on the, um, I think it's counterclockwise, or is it clockwise, or, I don't know, it's, a, it's hard to explain, but it's just... It's the opposite of a 45. So then, um, that's the bottom edge of the piece. So now we want to create the other edge to replicate the one inch tubing. So what I'm gonna do is use this offset command, and that's going to create another line exactly one inch away from this line. And it's parallel to this line, so it's gonna work out perfectly. So we go ahead and click that piece and then offset it. And as you can see here, it doesn't exactly uh, reach all the way, and neither does this one. So we're going to use the extend command. And so we're going to hit EX, and that's going to open up the extend command. And then we select the piece we want to extend. And then we select the edges we want to extend it to. Or maybe I did this backwards. 
Yeah, I think I did this backwards. Okay, so we're going to open up the extend command again. And then we want to select these edges and this edge. And then we're going to select the pieces. There we go. All right, cool. So now we have our other piece made up and it's perfectly symmetrical to the uh, to the um, other other side. And um, I was going to try and go for a piece that starts up here and kind of goes farther down, but I had to keep in mind that this needs to fit in the trunk space of my uh, car so I can transport this around. So I didn't want this piece to come too far out. Uh, so I had to keep this somewhat compact and um, that's it for those pieces. All right, so one piece or two pieces that I didn't mention when I was showing you guys the frame over on the ground that I wanted to add were these pieces that um, complete this kind of main section here. And, um, you know, you can see these two 45 pieces, but I just felt that this joint right here needs a little bit extra support, and same goes for the other side. So um, in order to kind of make this, you know, an, in order to maintain the symmetry that this kind of frame replicates, I'm just going to extend the lines of these pieces here and basically it's just going to start here and then go to this edge here. So what I'm going to do is use the line command and then start right at that joint and then just tell it to go at a 135 degree angle because that's the same angle as the other one and then that goes right to that edge. So then I'm just going to go ahead and extend the other one as, or no, I'm just going to want a line command start at that joint and then also maintain a 135 degree angle that's not what I wanted 135 degrees there we go see it set it as the length is 135 I didn't want that so now you can see that I have a perfectly square piece and I'm just gonna go ahead and use the trim command trim that and then I want to extend the other one because it falls short just a tad so I want to extend it to that side and then there we go so now you can see that this goes all the way through but I don't want that I want it to stop here so I'm gonna go ahead and use the trim command again and then I want to stop it on this edge and I click enter and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim this and trim this and now it looks perfectly fine maintains that 45 degree uh, you know symmetry extending this piece down and I'm gonna go ahead and do it for the other side alright so before I wrap up the AutoCAD portion of this video I just want to show you guys the last two pieces I added to the frame um, these pieces are right here and they're uh, two more 45 degree cut pieces that connect this midsection to the front section uh, the reason why I wanted to add these is just because, just like down here, um, where there was only three connection points without those two pieces I added, um, I felt that adding an extra, you know, connection point between this midsection and the front section would be a lot safer and um, make the frame quite a bit stronger in terms of, you know, being able to handle weight or whatever kind of forces we throw at it while driving the cart. And I mean, adding these two extra pieces up here are not going to add a whole bunch of weight. I mean, it's, you know, hollow steel, so it's not adding a whole lot of weight. And I felt that it was just worth it um, in terms of, you know, adding for that extra safety and also for performance because when your frame is more, you know, structurally sound and sturdy and rigid, you know, you're going to get better performance because you won't get torsion and when you're driving and stuff like that so um, for now this is all what I'm going to add to the frame so the next step is to measure all these up and then cut them on the uh, miter saw all right so I went ahead and measured up all the pieces on AutoCAD so it looks like we have a total of six pieces to cut two at 6.59 inches two at 7.71 inches and two at 9.07 inches so I'm going to go ahead, I have the steel laid out on the ground right now. I'm going to go ahead and measure one. And then as we learned from our very first video, we have to measure then cut. So I'm going to go ahead and measure it up and then pull out the miter saw and cut it up.
What's up everyone? So basically you guys just finished watching me uh, measure out and cut all those extra pieces that I had designed on AutoCAD that I wanted to add onto the frame. And I wanted to catch you guys up on with what happened off camera uh, that I didn't record. And basically after I finished cutting all those pieces and then following that with cutting the 45 degree angles off each end of those pieces, I went ahead and threw those up in the vise and then just used the angle grinder to you know, prep the surfaces for welding and you know, get all the extra little chunks of metal off and you know, grind down any high spots. And I went ahead and laid them down you know, onto the frame on the ground here and I was about to start welding and then I started to feel really like bad and wasn't feeling very good. So I was going to work late into the night like I had been for the past few nights to try and get a lot of stuff done. but. I felt that it was most appropriate to kind of take some time off and just take it easy. So that's what I did. I didn't really do any more work last night after uh, prepping those pieces. Um, but I got some good rest and I'm feeling better, a little bit better this morning. And uh, basically what I've been doing so far is just welding in those, um, those you know, new uh, 45 degree angle pieces. And a few of them I've had to, you know, kind of grind down some of the edges because they don't fit you know perfectly flush but it's been going well so far so I have one more to go I just wanted to do all that first and then I'll show you guys the last one and then after that I'm gonna flip the entire frame over and then weld the other sides of these pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and get right to it and show you guys so before I start welding I just kinda wanna show you guys what I've done so far so basically I've welded in this piece this piece this piece this piece and this piece and so the last one I have to do is right here and I'm, I'm really stoked with how that's coming out. It just makes the thing, it makes the frame look so, you know, angular and like, like it, it gives it motion standing still, if you know what I mean, like it's going forward. And I just love these, you know, angle pieces. It doesn't, it makes the frame look a lot less boxy. And that's what I was kind of worried about when I initially designed this is I didn't want it to be like, you know, really boxy. So I think the, putting these angled pieces in there really gives it some motion and some variety in the design. And so I'm going to go ahead and get this piece right here all prepped with the magnets and I might have to do some grinding of that but then I'm, after that I'm going to go ahead and weld it in. So one thing that I like doing um, before I go ahead and weld uh, these pieces in is I double check and make sure the spacing is right. So basically what I did was I went on the computer and measured the distance from the edge of the frame here to the inner part of the, the, this kind of truss piece. And so I went ahead and did that, and it's actually the gap is perfectly at five inches, so that worked out really nicely. And it's just about there. It's not gonna be perfect, but um, you know it's pretty close to the other one. The other one was a little bit more than five inches, so I'm gonna I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this in now. So I'm gonna get flip on the welder, throw my gloves on, and then I'll go ahead and weld it in. good. So now that I finished all the welding on one side, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and then finish it on the other side. Alright, so now that we got that all squared away, Got the ground clamp set up. I'm gonna go ahead and just weld everything because I don't really need to worry about the magnets because it's pretty much already held in place. For the most part, all this separation looks good, just except this one piece. I don't really know what happened here. It kind of lifted. Uh, probably just wasn't sitting well to begin with, but 
It'll be, it'll do. So I'm going to kind of go front to back. I'll help turn the mother. not as pretty as I would like it to be. So everyone looked really good, except this one right here. I don't like this one at all. It's not really sitting flush, but you know, not everyone's gonna be perfect. So what I'm gonna do really quickly um, before I finish this up is uh, I'm just gonna take my wire brush and I'm going to uh, kind of just brush down all of the surfaces that I welded. what this does is it gets rid of the slag that comes with uh, when you use these flux core wires it's kind of like a brown um, it almost looks like a dust kind of and it just it gets it off the uh, welds and it kind of makes it look at least a little more pretty than having all this brown crap all over your welds <laughs> 